Yes, and Young Good Morning showbiz reporter James Corden has had a star-studded week of it. So a very star-studded week. What have you got? Hot hot gloss. Well, before James Corden showed his face to American audiences in Into the Woods, winning a BAFTA for Artist of the Year and a Tony for his comedy work. It's, uh, it's, it's a magic that defies description. Yes. How many beans? Six. The five. Five. They're worth a pound each at least. Before James Corden shared the mic with Dizzy Rascal for the number one hit single, Shout, and brushed shoulders with Adele, David Beckham, and Michelle Obama. Before Corden would be crowned the new king of late night television with his carpool karaoke, getting over a billion views. And then from there, carpool karaoke would become its very own standalone series. Which I find ridiculous. Like way back in the day, I like did something like this, and it went nowhere. Before Triple X star Vin Diesel asked Corden for a chance on the mic. Consider yourself part of the family. <laughs> We've taken to you so strong. Long before James would make karaoke look cool again, kind of. At least for Americans. Getting started at a young age, he would pay his dues on the stage and screen in the UK, using the same wit he had to outsmart the bullies back at school. By 2000, Corden was called Britain's next great comic. But when you're at the top, people love to cut you down. And a few tabloid stories and box office flops, well, it looked like Corden was never gonna make it to Hollywood. But then Craig Ferguson, he stepped down from CBS's The Late Late Show. And James Corden was as surprised as anyone that he was the guy going to take up the role. Now the man is at the top of his game hosting the 2017 Grammys, where at one point he decided to take the stage in his underwear. I just want to let you know James, I did it first. My name is Michael Lucretton, this is IO Trends. We have the top 5 sexual movie moments, so let's jump right into things. Yeah, I've been doing this YouTube thing for for a little while. What's going on guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of James Corden prior to fame, here for you on Before They Are Famous. We've covered other comedians including Daniel Tosh and Kevin Hart, be sure to check those out. But as always, let us know in the comments down below who you want me to document next. D&J briefs. It's underwear for a man with a great body. And David Beckham. James Kimberly Corden was born in London, England on August 22nd back in 1978. The family made the move to Hazelmere soon after where his father Malcolm played music in the Royal Air Force and his mother Margaret was a social worker. James was the middle child between two sisters, Andrea and Ruth, and discovered his love for entertaining while at church. His parents were part of the Salvation Army Church and put James up on a chair so he could see his sister get christened. He immediately started joking around and got the crowd laughing. And this kid had it all. He could dance, he could sing, he could act, and he thought school, well, it was a waste of time. In fact, he didn't even have the interest to go to school at all. He would wake up in the morning and wait till his parents took off to work, and then he would sneak back in the house and lounge around for the day. By the time he was 14, this was a regular occurrence. And then one day, a popular British show known as Richard and Judy, well, they were looking for viewers to call in, those who had stories of bullying. James immediately picked up the phone and put on what he called his best performance to date, stating that he was a kid who was often bullied because of his weight. He was loving all the attention, he was on TV, but unfortunately his aunt was watching the show at home, and young James, well he got busted. But at least he had found what his interests were in. Not only did he return to school, but he also began training after hours in the Jackie Palmer Stage School program. In his spare time, he spent forming a boy band and going to auditions around London. Around this time, Corden had really packed on the pounds, but he would use his comedy to discourage any haters and learn to make fun of his own weight, a skill that would come in handy throughout his career. Do you like marmalade by any chance? <laughs> Hi, this is James right here, and I'm Meatloaf, and and we're doing this uh, English breakfast show and it's like really cool. After graduating, James caught his first big break with a role in a musical when he was 18. Okay, not really. He only had one line in the show, but he must have killed it because it led to his first TV role and some ad work. He trudged along with small appearances in big shows like Little Britain and Holly Oaks, and then he was cast in a series, Fat Friends. Now I got to imagine young James, he felt pretty confident walking into that audition room, if you know what I mean. Because of the title. That's not for you. This is your place. Three units. Thanks. Yeah, this industry can be pretty harsh on overweight actors. In fact, I get a little hate myself. 
You're either fat and funny or fat and sad. But James rolled with the punches like he always had and got his first acting nomination for his work. Then he really started making a name for himself on stage after landing a big role in the acclaimed play The History Boys. While backstage, he'd always tell stories to Alan Bennett, one of England's most famous playwrights, and the guy thought his stories were hilarious. He told James to write them down. And James, he took that advice and created a sitcom with his fat friend co-star in 2007 titled Gavin and Stacey. This went on to be a big hit and it looked like Corden had finally broken through. But his next two feature films, Horn and Corden and Lesbian Vampire Killer, well they ended up being massive belly flops. It felt shit at the time, but no one could have really been aware. No one could have ever imagined quite how shit it is. <laughs> Tabloids just a few months ago were stating that James was destined to be England's next great comic. And now they were saying that he wouldn't live up to expectations. James kept on grinding and proved everyone wrong again in 2012 when he took home a Tony for his work in One Man, Two Governors. Two years later, he was tapped to appear in the musical Into the Woods, making his first big appearance with North American audiences. These beans, they carry magic. Magic? What kind of magic? Tell him. The timing couldn't have been better because in 2014, The Late Late Show was replacing Craig Ferguson. And CBS, they had their eyes on James Corden. They thought his blend of hammy theater and screen work was a winning combination. No one was more surprised by the offer than James, since he had never really been seen by an American audience before. It was a risky choice, but it became official in March of 2015 when he did his first episode with Tom Hanks. Not a bad start. No crying in baseball! No crying! <laughs> Don't cry, shop girl. <laughs> there were a few months there out the gate that his talk show failed to take off. And when Seth Meyers is beating you, trust me, it's bad. Corder knew he stood a better chance with spots online than competing with the other late night hosts and turned to an old carpool karaoke sketch that he had once done with George Michael. Baby, I'm your was on to something and to kickstart the series, he needed a massive star. Cue Mariah Carey, who recently isn't doing much singing anyway, so it all made sense. What would you want for Christmas? I don't know. I want you to sing my song, All I Want for Christmas is You. <laughs> With his first kick at the can, the video went viral and helped bring Corden's show into the spotlight. As for the rest of the story, well, you know the story because this is Before They're Famous. My name is Mike McCredden. We make all sorts of celebrity bios here for you on this channel. And uh, we're looking for you guys to suggest who we should do next. We've done Jimmy Fallon in the past, but that could use an update. Conan O'Brien, that would be amazing. Seth MacFarlane, we were waiting to do that one. I'd like to get it done. So let us know who's next in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in another video. Are you sure you want to do it? <laughs> I think it's too late now, Craig, but... <laughs>